I'm Ben Eggleston and welcome back to Eggleston on Guitar. We're back in the Torn Loft again. Uh, it's part two of uh, of a two-part series called Ben's Guitar Secrets. Um, again, I'll reiterate again, this is not my wisdom of the fretboard. These are actually my guitar secrets uh, that I haven't, don't really tell people about because it's a bit embarrassing. But hey, right at the very start of this channel and at the very, very beginning of this journey, let's get them all out on the table now. Secret number two, uh, that not many people know actually, and people are quite surprised when they find this out, is I'm a secret lefty. Uh, now that's got nothing to do with my political views. Um, I'm I'm left-handed. Uh, I think that surprises a lot of people. I play a right-handed guitar, a, a standard kind of guitar. Uh, do everything on here as a right-handed person would, but I am left-handed. This one my right hand just the same as your left hand probably doesn't work that well doesn't do everything that i want it to do i've trained it to do some things over the years like the old uh, pick tuck so that i can have these and get the pick back out again i managed to train it to do a couple of things but in general it's not that good you'll know what i mean imagine using in your left hand so how did this happen how did this come about um so i started playing around 83 about 1983 i was eight years old seven eight year old yeah somewhere around there anyway i didn't really have access to um it was i started on acoustic i didn't have access to a, a left-handed acoustic uh there was some stuff going on at my primary school at the time for our american friends that's kindergarten ish around that age maybe not uh anyway it's very very young and the school provided some um, guitars and we could all sit and learn together and one of the things one of the first things I ever learned how to do on guitar was no pick because our teacher at the time it was our headmistress and she wasn't that keen on us using a pick didn't want all that rock and roll stuff she taught us how to do and I, I still can't do it frankly um, it's because I can make the shape on here with this hand, the D shape, but I can't get these finger things to work at all. I've tried for many, many years and got to the point where I've just kind of given up. I play with a pick now. I can tuck for if I want to do the kind of the double stop sort of things and I get the pick back out to pleck again, pleck, pluck again. Um, but I, I, I'm not really able to use this hand very much at all. But at the time, and this is my kind of this tip part to the secret if you're super new to guitar and in fact if you're thinking about getting into it and you happen to be left-handed don't be afraid of getting a right-handed guitar because if you start you start from a, a level point of zero same as everybody starts and if you don't know any different there's a lot of reasons why if you're left-handed that playing the guitar this way around in what they call a right-handed fashion would make sense. For example, my little kid brain, still slightly little kid brain, my brain at the time thought that this made total sense because I figured that all of the work was going on with this hand. Um, so it made sense to me to, to put this left hand onto here where the work was done because that was my favoured and, and preferred hand at the time. There's still a part of me now that I don't know why this way around is called right-handed and the other way around is called left-handed. It, there's still part of that, that that puzzles me, but whatever. It has left behind some, some hiccups and hindrances though. Uh, for example, this is my much weaker hand and I do find it difficult to do things like alternate picking. Um, I have to get super, super comfortable with a phrase and super comfortable and, and be feeling good, have, be warmed up and generally just be feeling good to bust into some quick alternate picking stuff. Um, I, I, just, I just find it quite a challenge. It runs like the ones that I played at the beginning. So the, try it again.
that takes a lot of brain power for me and it shouldn't do because it's a fairly straightforward pentatonic run um a bit of a slightly tongue twister with this hand run but this hand doesn't mind the kind of tongue twister finger twister type stuff it's this hand that gets upset um whereas i appreciate for a lot of uh, right-handed guitarists or standard way around guitarists that this hand would be a little bit more difficult to control and i get that because i feel it with this I do end up kind of shying away a little bit, certainly from finger style, and I can't hybrid pick to save my life. Um, but I do shy away a little bit from alternate picking. What I tend to do is use a lot of uh, legato. If you've not heard that phrase before, it's where you kind of, you don't really need this hand. Um, you can call it hammer on, pulls off, whichever way you want to call it, legato. I do tend to call it hammer on and pulling off, to be honest. I just said legato because I wanted it to sound fancy. But yeah, I'll tend to do a lot of that because I don't need to use this hand at all. Uh, a good example of that is if I'm getting into the kind of, the kind of very, what you class as quicker playing stuff. Um, if you notice with this hand, it doesn't do much at all some people call it economy picking i call it i can't help it picking that's just how it is for me <laughs> you'll notice that not a lot goes on with with this hand and most of the work's done over here I'll try it again <laughs> So economy picking, um, whether you like, some people do this on purpose. I can't do it on purpose. That's about as good as I can do. I, I can't, I'll, let's do a little bit of an example. I understand the up down of the, of the alternate picking. I understand that kind of thing, but I can't get it to do it that fast and that clean and sync these two hands up together because they just won't. I've tried for many years, and unfortunately they won't. That's not actually bad for me. It's not too bad-ish for me. It's about at the upper limit of how quick I can do that by making sure I pick every note. I'm certainly no Paul Gilbert. Um, I c if I want to do it any quicker than that, then I've got to kind of let this hand dip in and out as it as it wants. What it does mean though is that you're kind of stuck to to needing quite a bit of gain. If I knock some of the gain off and try it without that, so it's just like a still a bit of crunch there, but it's not quite it's not as gainy as the, the previous sound. You'll notice that it kind of shows up a lot of my uh, a lot of my picking weaknesses there. Um, so for for solos and things like that, you'll often hear me kicking a, a tube screamer, uh, and you could you could call that a bit of a crutch. It is. Luckily, it's the accepted thing to do in the guitar world that a lot of people will kick in a tube screamer for solo, so I can get away with it. As I say, if you're absolutely brand new to picking up the guitar and you are left-handed, do do consider giving a, a right-handed guitar a go. It, it can be done, I'm living proof of that. Um, do learn things like the, uh, the pick tuck subscribe and there'll be a, a video lesson coming up on how ways to pick tuck even if you haven't got much dexterity in your in this hand in your right hand um but it's that's definitely worth learning how to do because you can't i can do the the crabby claw pincer type movements no problems at all i can't really get these these fingers to move in the finger style as i said earlier but i can pick it up and do the, the crabby claw stuff so with the type of music that i like to to listen to and play um there's the stuff that where that becomes really helpful for the kind of double stops if you <laughs> I 
as I say, every now and again you can nip it out and, and crab it claw. <laughs> it's not even an actual technique, but it does work. And yeah, as long as you're willing to kind of put in the time with the uh, with this side and learning the, the scales and learning the scale shapes. Again, as I said in the previous video, I've got a hand on heart and to be honest, not particularly good with the names. I've figured out all the shapes. Um, but as long as you're willing to put a bit of time in so that that muscle repetition and you can just kind of, you know where you want to be and you can know where the shapes are. If you can get this hand to kind of run those run those fluently and without using your picking hand at all, then you'll find that with a little bit of gain, and let's just try it with like a, a driven sound with a, a bit of kind of, I suppose this is tube screamer sort of thing, but taking it to the extreme without doing this hand at all, the rock version of pointing in the crowd. <laughs> If you can figure that out and you can get your hands to be able to hammer on and pull off, they're super important techniques if you're going to, important techniques for all guitarists, but if you're going to be weak on this hand and strong on the fretboard hand, then you're going to need that hammer on and pull off to get you through. All you have to do is kind of grab every so often, grab one of the strings that you're using and you're... And it kind of sounds like you're doing it. It's enough to give a sound out to the audience. And frankly, let's be real about this. As guitarists, we get far too hung up on the idea that the audience members might all be guitarists. No, all they're interested in is that you stand up there and make a good sound that's enjoyable. Anyway, it would be a real honor if you would decide to, to subscribe to this channel. I'll be putting more things out and we'll get a little bit more in depth with techniques. I do actually know some and there's some valuable knowledge to share with you. Um, but uh, for now, that is as much of the guitar secrets as I'm willing to give away at this point. Catch you shortly. <laughs>